Hey, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Cowboy Tim coming to you from almost Gallup, New Mexico. I I already missed it. It warmed up. It says 30 now. A minute ago, it said 29 degrees. Oh, my goodness. I haven't been in 29 degrees in, I don't know. <laughs> I really can't remember. But when you're wearing clothes, which... I never wear clothes in Florida. I don't mean that literally. I mean, we, we live in t-shirts, shorts, and flip-flops. You can't even wear a long sleeve shirt. It's difficult to wear pants. Uh, shoes and socks make you hot. It's really horrible. And I am loving this beautiful weather uh, that it warms up to during the day here. Uh, the 60s is great, 70s is great. The low humidity is what's the best. <clears throat> now, the winds can be bad out here, but right now they're, they're pretty calm. I'm just dragging along here, um, 75 miles an hour, in the right lane. <laughs> I think that's Route 66 over there on the right. And uh, so I made a couple of videos this morning. <coughs> I got it. I made a couple of videos this morning. Got up having coffee. Let me just tell you, I've, I've got another new, better attitude even today than yesterday. Just when I thought it couldn't get any better. About the teardrop. The cramper is really earning its keep. Now last night I freaked out a little bit when I <clears throat> got ready to bed down. See, this lane's terrible. And none of the lights came on, dead in the water. I said, oh boy, we got a problem, Houston. Turns out that battery cable uh, broke off the positive side. I was able to rig it and I'll fix that at some point. And uh, then we had coffee, I saw the moon set. I got more coffee. Filled up for only three dollars and three cents, but listen, that uh, little bushwhacker with that furnace. Okay, first of all, you cannot hear it. You really can't. the the uh, The vent is not being obstructed because it kind of points up anyway. So my bed and the little, uh, not the little, but the what do you call that? Memory foam I've added on all the bed clothes hasn't raised it so high that it's covering it but when you put your hand up you can definitely feel that blowing and then I went outside opened up the uh, the galley and then down in the the furnace area I wanted to make sure where there's some aluminum foil boxes and different things and nothing was you know obstructing the furnace but it has a little blind wall built around everything where nothing can really interfere and it looks brand new in there. There's no dust or anything. I mean, like I said, when I pulled the uh, wheel caps off of the uh, teardrop and checked the wheel bearings, the grease was still purple. It hasn't even turned black. Nobody's towed this thing. They, they went somewhere local. I, they, they have, nobody's towed it like I've towed it so far. And that furnace, being a Florida, <laughs> being that two people own it in Florida, I'm sure they never even turned it on. But when I turned it on last night, turned the uh, the tank on, and I'm so glad I have two more propane tanks, it just all of a sudden felt warm in there. And I uh, I set it to like, you know, to barely come on and take the chill off because it was so cold that it definitely came on. And I woke up, uh, you know, and I asked Siri what time it was. I think it was two in the morning. And I was noticing that you know, I'm pretty comfortable. It was cool in there because I didn't want it to be hot. But it was not like the couple of nights before uh, where I was, my feet were a little cold. It was in the 40s. And when I came out of the covers, uh, you know, it felt like cold air in there. Well, last night, you know, I, I knew it was going to be 30 degrees. 29 this morning so I, I definitely put that furnace on and I was 
I mean, it's just perfect. And the fact that I used the air conditioning already several times, uh, parked over at Ted's, and I had shore power going, you have to have, anytime it's over 70 degrees, 71 degrees outside, you need that air conditioning on on the inside, uh, unless you can, uh, you know, open the windows and turn that fantastic max air fan on and suck uh, cool air. Now at night, you may not need it, but during the day, so the AC 5000 BTU air conditioning works awesome. That's probably never been used much. I pulled the filter out on it. It's It was like brand new. I'm telling you, that is a new uh, Braxton Creek um, Bushwhacker 10 SS. I think what they did is they upgraded those to another model shortly after making that one. Speed and check reported ahead on I 40 West. Speed check ahead. Anyway, they, um, they put another door on the other side so that if you have two people in there, they can get out their other, the other side. And that would be great. You know if you had two people in there to have two doors but I'm just by myself and uh, also there was a recall someone sent me a, uh, a, a comment when I first got it about the lag bolts breaking and the whole camper coming off the trailer potentially I don't know if any of them ever did maybe one of the lag bolts broke on one so there was a recall so I called them up and gave them the VIN number. They said, oh, no, yours was built after that. Yours is good. So I'm just, just I'm tickled to have this thing. And I'm not ever going to sell it. I'm going to, um, my neighbor, he owns his own property. And he said I can store it there. He's got a bunch of area in the back of his uh, mobile home. So I'll just put it there. And I'll start doing a lot of traveling. A lot of you are asking, hey, are you ever going to show us anything about a truck stop? Well, you know, I'm just getting started with my traveling. And I'm just getting my feet wet, my boots wet. And I'm figuring it out. It's going to be a learning curve. Right now, I'm telling you, I'm never going to want to pay if I can stay for an overnight. And I just don't want to move on the next morning, you know, trying to get somewhere. What is the point? of going and, you know, paying an RV park and I, and I don't need anything. I can run my, um, what do you call the uh, heater? It's a boondocking heater, runs on that battery, the, the pump, the, uh, to blow the blower. And then, uh, there's that speed checker right there. And uh, so I'm good. I, I don't need to pay. And when I go inside and lay down in that thing, I don't know where I'm at. But yeah, if I'm going to be somewhere and I'm going to explore around, ride the e-bike and enjoy the area and meet the neighbors, and I'm going to stay there a couple of days or a week or three days, of course, I'll pay. But think of the money I'm saving staying at these truck stops that are basically giving me free fuel of what I'm saving on uh, campgrounds every night and everyone I go to is covered up with people moving down the road uh, in their trucks their cars their vans uh, the little small RVs uh, sitting over there parked just like me sleeping I've called at least twice now inside the store and inquired about when they have that sign out there about one hour parking and both times without hesitation they said no no you're, you're good they um, they're real good and having the 24 hour if you go to a campground you may have to walk a ways <laughs> to get to the shower and bathhouse and it could be cold those are generally very uh, primitive showers and bathhouses toilets you go in here it's a it's a clean nice 
private stall, multiple stalls, multiple sinks, hot and cold water, snacks, coffee, any time of day. It's great. It's just a great way uh, to move down the road uh, to get to your destination without having to, you know, get a room or uh, stay at a campground. Now, the people that are staying there in their car, I, you know, that's kind of roughing it. You know, unless you've got a van or somewhere where you can stretch out and lay down, laying in your front seat or just reclining the seat back, that's not the best, uh, best way to, to recharge your battery. And then, of course, the, uh, the Planet Fitness, the gyms, they're dotted all across the country. And having that, I've had one every morning. Now, there wasn't one close this morning. I'll hit one up in Flagstaff up here today and get my workout in and, you know, shower and um, get all cleaned up. But uh, I'm good. And what else can I tell you? It's just, it's just so fun. Now, right now it's 34 degrees. It's warming up. <laughs> but I'm, I'm in high altitude and uh, almost a gallop uh, where they have the hot, hot air balloon deal every year and it's a very high altitude here it's going to be cold but when I get down into um, what am I coming up to Albuquerque yeah next exit it says souvenirs snacks drinks oh I have my own oh it's a travel plaza I'm full of gas <laughs> not literally but my truck's full of gas, and I'm getting 13.3 miles per gallon, it indicates right now. And that's another great savings. I mean, I, I'm, I'm being able to buy a lot of gas for what I'm saving on campgrounds uh, to get to my destination out west here. And, uh, the you know, the truck is not a very economical truck, but man. I wouldn't even be this far out if I was pulling the crasher. I'm never gonna pull that crasher. This is fine. This is absolutely the ticket for a solo traveler to have a good place to sleep with TV, air conditioning, and heat, and a safe, hard-sided, locked door, you know, place to be, absolutely. I mean, I can even park in a residential neighborhood on a, on a side street, like I'm visiting uh, somebody, you know, for the night. Pull in after dark. This is all the things I used to watch on YouTube of uh, these van dwellers that, uh, you know, they just sleep at night or they don't get towed or, you know, knock on the door at a Walmart. Some of them don't allow camping. And some people don't like to stay at Walmarts. Now that I know about Cracker Barrel and truck stops and there's always, you know, it's 24 hours, it's lit up. Walmart's closed now. And, you know, there's some sketchy people that can come walking around Walmart parking lot. And they want you to be out there in the South 40 if you do have a, a big truck or an RV. And there's nowhere to use the restroom if you need to because they're closed. So in a pinch, I'll definitely stay at one. My friend Scott, that's where he was staying with his uh, crasher, his flagstaff that came from San Diego. He's enjoying the warm weather in the Sunshine State right now uh, down there. He visited his 90-year-old uh, uncle Ralph at the Villages. Ralph's doing, Ralph's doing good. I've got another subscriber that lives in the Villages. Uh, his name is Ken, and he's uh, he's always reaching out to me every day and saying hi. Speaking of hi, there's the police. He, uh, he's not turning around coming after anybody, and that van was going faster than me. There's a TA, uh, travel, what does that stand for? I used to remember a travel center, all these travel centers, but... I just left one and I got gas, so I don't need to stop. I need to get some miles down, get over to Albuquerque. And then today we will be in Sedona. 
and we'll look for a place to stay if it's uh, going to be somewhere I want to stay for a couple of days. I'm already thinking about, you know, repeating the trip I've done three or four times already and going all the way to California and hitting Big Sur through the wine country. And if I still drink, I'd stop at some wineries, but I don't drink. And All right, Kingman, 324, Flagstaff, 181. And that's where the Grand Canyon is. I'm definitely going to try and hit that up. Got the free pass into that. Going to take, a, maybe we'll camp out in there on the south rim. And I want to walk down in the canyon a few hundred yards to uh, get the grand feel, as uh, so I was instructed to do by someone a long time ago. And I'll bring you guys along with me. Look at the sleeper on this cab. Look at that big old sleeper he's got. He's got a Holy crap, that's a uh, that's an apartment he's carrying on the back of that truck. Wow, that thing was huge. He never uh, gets a hotel. Hmm. Those truckers, I, I, I've been watching these trucks quite a bit. That's a pretty one right there. Yeah, a lot of them are new. And at the truck stop, you always see them at the gas pump. They have, they have their own area. <clears throat> and they're there a while because they, I don't know what the range is. You can tell me in comments. But they got those two big giant tanks on there, diesel. And it takes a while to fill up. And then they're on the road again or they're parked back there to sleep for the night. Some drive all night. And a lot of them, these truck stops, they get filled up so fast, these guys got nowhere to park. So you see them parking on the um, on-ramp, the get-on ramp, anywhere they can. You know, they leave their running lights on all night. I sure would like to drive one. And listen to this. I did a, I did a search because <clears throat> I saw two ladies driving big trucks. And the one lady I saw, the first one, she looked young. And she was attractive. I mean, just a glance I saw. And she come wheeling out of there. She had a beautiful, like an ice blue uh, KW. And she, uh, some of them, they sort of drag themselves out of these truck stops. They're real loud. And they're in the lowest gear they got. And then you see the cab shaking and moving. I guess they got a big load of weight. And they're just like real slow. She come pulling out of that diesel pump and swung uh, real easily around the cars in the front there and then out. And then I saw her go down and make a U-turn and she spun that thing around like she was driving a Camry. And it was quiet when it went by. She didn't have that loud uh, stacks on there and then mufflers they like to put on. Some of them, they like to make all that racket like people do on the uh, Harleys, you know. they. Put those loud pipes on. I like them when they're quiet. And it was brand new. Then I saw another lady, and she had a lady uh, with her, you know, like a co-rider, co-driver maybe. So I Googled it, and I said, what is the percentage of women that drive trucks? 6% only. It's still very dominated by the male uh, truck drivers. Only 6%. So then I said, all right, Google, what, uh, actually I was asking Siri, what was the, uh, what is the highest percentage of occupations uh, for females? And it was teachers, nurses, and what was the other one? It was three of them. Teachers, nurses, and Oh, darn it. And it was like 89, 90-something percent of all those, especially the nursing. And the teachers, there's male, there's male teachers, but it's still like 86 or 89 percent female uh, that are teachers, educators. What was that third category that they're, they do? But anyway, 
Just a little fun fact for you there. So we're riding on a nice smooth road. The engine of this 33, 33, 33 degrees. Uh, the uh, the engine sounds quiet. It loves the cold air. It's running really good. And uh, my radar thing just came on because that guy jumped in front of me. I'm up to 13.7, knocking on the door of 14 miles per gallon, running 70. I'll keep it here. Yeah, I knew that that bumpy road was, uh, I mean, thank goodness that's the least of it that it broke that battery cable. And thank God I was able to fix it last night or I would have froze inside that camper and no light. I got to charge that flashlight I got. It's a really good one. It's rechargeable. I used the heck out of it last night and this morning looking down in that diamond plate uh, storage box on the front of the cramper. And then last night, um, well, that was it. Uh, once I got the battery uh, connected back on the rough road again, uh, I was able to uh, see inside the uh, teardrop. But it has a little uh, USB charging. It takes a long time to charge it, but it, it takes a long time to kill it too. It's a very bright, very bright uh, flashlight. It's a little square thing you can stand. Uh, it has a little handle that pops out and you can use it as a, a stand to hold it so you can see what you're doing. I got it for Christmas one year. I gave somebody else one at the same time. I liked it so good I bought myself one. I don't think they still use theirs anymore. But um, what else we got? Gonna have to make time to do uh, crushing it for Christ because I feel so blessed and I'm having such a good time, and I don't want to um, just assume. I mean, like last night, God was looking after me, uh, fixing that cable, having that flashlight. I brought a razor knife, I brought a couple of crescent wrenches, some channel locks, and I do have a, a small uh, tool set that, uh, you know, like the tools that can do anything, you know, pliers, crescent wrench, <laughs> channel locks, vice grips. I got some tape, you know, I got some stuff like that. And the fact that I've got that and a community that can help me and flashlight. I just want to um, keep counting my blessings and remember that everything and all this is coming to me, the saving on everything, uh, the good deal on the shirts and the boots I got. Really loving uh, this whole thing. The boots are very comfortable today. Uh, they have a, uh, somebody sent me a video on YouTube. It's only about a minute and a half long. It's a nice lady that points out the five top things about the Ariat uh, work boot and she mentioned about how they have a western theme and you know that's what I'm looking for western looking cowboy boot so they're so they're work boots okay that's a bonus I got two I got two two and one but one of the things I remember that it said it, it talked about the soul and the comfort of it and the construction of it and uh, down inside if you're doing a lot of walking, it's got a, uh, you know, which cowboy boots do not provide comfort. If you buy that pointy toe, high heel, you know, they make cowboy boots that don't have that kind of heel. That's the last pair I had. I bought that one I just described before. And they were very uncomfortable. But anyway, back to the Ariat. It said, easy on and off. Boy, the police are everywhere. There's another one checking speed. Uh... You can, you can put your foot down in it. I've never had a cowboy boot that you didn't have to sit down, struggle to get your foot in, and then it was comfortable. You know, I mean, as far as the fit goes, it wasn't comfortable to walk in after a while. Uh, and then to get it off, you needed a boot puller or somebody else to put your foot up between their legs and push on them to get your shoe off. And, I, you know, I'm not as... Uh, I'm not the contortionist that I was when I was younger. I don't have the flexibility to 
pull my leg up, you know, like Indian style and pull that boot off and they're not broke in. But these, you step right out of them and you can step into them and drop your foot down in there and they, they feel roomy, but not loose. If they continue to break in and I think they're, ooh, I, knew, I aimed right for it and I got it. Better back up, I think I missed one. Uh, I, uh, what was this? I, I could buy some, you know, Dr. Scholl's or even a, a little more expensive one if they become a little roomy inside. I could buy a thicker sock, although I've got uh, dicky socks I bought and they're uh, dry fit, you know, they're moisture wicking. I think I'm good like, like I am. I don't need to do anything, but I can always do that because they are not too tight. And yeah, it does make the complete ensemble, ensemble with the jeans. I probably want to pick up, heck, the Wranglers I got on instead of buying those expensive ones uh, at Walmart. These actually have a little bit of, I think they might even have a little bit of stretch in them. I call those pantyhose pants. I got my pantyhose pants on, pantyhose. Uh, it's just a joke. Some of the uh, pants they're selling these days do have a, uh, a little stretch in them. You know, instead of that typical old no-give Levi total denim, you know, unless you're real light in the ass, you're real thin, uh, you're not going to be comfortable in the, uh, you know, natural fitting jeans. So I, I like how I can... These can have a little give to them. And uh, I think I'm a little partial to the white hat than the uh, black. I'm going to buy a bandana. I've been told twice. Next time I stop at a Love's, they have them. And I'm going to wear a bandana. And you can wear it on your head with the, uh, with the hat on. They have that rock and roll star look. Who's that guy that always does that? Uh, famous uh, singer, a couple of them probably. Um, hey, one of the most, did, didn't they sing that song, Wanted Dead or Alive? Wasn't he the guy that wore these kind of hats? And Ted Nugent? <laughs> or I'll wear that bandana around my neck like a cowboy. You guys can tell me how I'm supposed to wear it. I used to wear them when I had my Harley as a do-rag, you know, uh, and then you put your helmet on, or you could ride helmetless. What? Arizona's rest area, Grant's Road, coming into Arizona? All right, another state. We're definitely cowboy country now. Cool. Let's go in there together. It's only two miles. No wonder that New Mexico was working at speed uh, speed limit, speed traps uh, behind me there. What a welcome to New Mexico, huh? Don't bring your speeding butt through here. Well, it's 32 degrees. It's literally freezing. So I will not be stopping in the rest area to video, to tinkle, to cook breakfast or anything. I will wait. It's 8.10 locally. Arizona does not uh, uh, participate in the uh, daylight saving time. I may go back to 9 a.m. We're going to find out. As I cross the state line, the, the truck will tell me. It always welcomes me to a new state. You'll hear it. So that'll be interesting. I might lose an hour. Or it might just stay on daylight saving. Arizona, all kind of signs. Oh, this is kind of a cool rest area on the state line. I remember this one. It's uh, got like a little zoo. There's some snakes. Yeah. Yeah, look, it's got a, I'll show you right over here. Look at that. They got this, uh, Welcome to Arizona. 
right as soon as you hit the line. Yeah, see all that? I've been in there before. My sister and I went in there. Yeah, a car in there right now. Well, pretty soon, oh, I might not be making breakfast. I'm remembering now what's ahead up here. It's not too far. I'll know it when I see it. There's a, um, there's a little uh, Mexican restaurant, a little corner unit, a little small place. There's a sign that says, Welcome to Arizona. Ah, guess what, folks? Ha <laughs> ha! I went back an hour. That's right, we sprung forward. We're back. We're back to 7, 12 a.m. <laughs> cool. 150 miles to Flagstaff. Just picked up an hour. And I'm going to look for this little Mexican restaurant. I'll get myself a machaca. A machaca burrito. I know it's up here not too far. There's like a hill and an exit. It goes uphill. Yeah, man. Back in Arizona. It's been a long time. Got my boots. Got my hat. My shirt. I'm fitting right in. All these... Texas, New Mexico. I go in, I get the nods from everybody, the truckers. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> yeah, when in Rome. This is fun, man. This is really fun. I got a nice truck here, I can tell you that. Thank God. I know it's reliable. It's going to run. Only got 40, 46,000, 47,000 miles. I changed the oil. The tires were new on it when I got it. They just put them on. And, uh, of course, the camper's new. So we got us a new package here. It's ready to go for a couple of trips. And I will never uh, take the 10 again. I'll, I'll run straight to Atlanta and get on that 20 and make myself west. Or I'll go, I'll go on further north and go to the 40 and make myself west, go west. I like 40 better than any of them, especially when it gets to Texas, because when you get to Texas on the 40, you only have that little hat, that little top of the Texas part that you have to go through. It's not that two-day drive. <laughs> but it does recommend you drop down when you're returning to Florida, so you have to hit that Dallas, which I never want to drive through again. I'll just go out of my way and drive 40 east all the way to Memphis and and then go down. I think the 40 kind of angles upwards, so you're going out of your way a little bit because they don't go straight across the country. They kind of uh, go straight from the Continental Divide but then they kind of angle up. And then the 20 and the 10, you know, they just hug the bottom. They are what they are. Then you got the 80, that's way up there. If you want to go into um, Utah and Idaho and up to Washington and everything. And that, that freeway isn't even open in the wintertime for a lot of it because it's covered with snow. I've been on the 80 and they got gates on the interest ramp entrance ramp that say closed so you never see that on the 20 or the 10 yeah this engine just shut off it's came in here running 14.3 miles per gallon everybody yep doing good well I guess I filled you in about everything uh, I want thanks for the tip on my uh, loves coffee cup, coffee mug that a lot of truck stops will still just charge you a refill if you have your own mug, no matter if it's a Loves or not, and that's that's good to know it'd be really good to know if you'd even do that at a 7-Eleven or something when I get back home because you know, then it was really worth buying it for $3 <laughs> I mean, if, if you think about it I feel like a fool for buying all those coffees for two seventy-seven, and then go right back in, run it for a finished one cup, and bought another one before I even learned about the refill. But when you 
if you just remember this, if you travel and you go into Love's and you buy the $3 plastic cup, the mug, you get the first cup of coffee for free, so the cup's really only half that price, and then the coffee's only $1.50 instead of $2.77, so now you're even, and then from then on, it's only a dollar and a half, and it's a big cup, you can get the you can get all the coffee you want. If you buy the big, big cup, you got more coffee than you can drink. So anyway, or you can always try to go into Walmart, I mean, uh, not Walmart, uh, Chick-fil-A's, McDonald's, and ask for senior coffees. Yeah, I think you can even get a senior Coke. If you're a senior, use it. Get your senior pass wear it out like I'm doing mine for the uh, national parks <laughs> we're gonna wear it out and guess what it's good for a lifetime folks so I got my next trip my next trip and my next trip and I'm gonna be tripping I'm tripping right now dragging this camper with this truck with these batteries and generators and e-bikes and friends and community riding along with me, GPS, iPhone, entertainment, what more do you need? You could be on the road forever. Wish there was somewhere I could put the crasher, not have to pay what I'm paying, and just store it. Well, I, I'm sure I could. And, um, you know, for less than what I'm paying for my rent. I'll have to look into that. But I did leave the power on and the AC at like 85 in case it gets hot uh, to keep the mold and, you know, whatever. Just, I want it to run. I'll be back uh, because of the doctor appointment to uh, decide if I can just not do that again, just leave everything off or, you know, store it or, or something else. I may end up being a nomad, folks. I may end up just staying out on the road because there's so much, there's so many places that I'm never going to get to in one trip. If I don't dedicate my life, if this is what I like to do, and <clears throat> that could be great entertainment for YouTube as well. I know a lot of you have just told me, I got a comment last night from a nice lady, and she said, uh, how'd she put it? She said, I'm a... I'm a, almost like I'm a Sheila. You know, I'm not going to get out there and do that. <clears throat> That's not me. But I absolutely love watching and learning these kinds of uh, videos, this kind of content. And I thought, well, that's really cool. You know, she likes it. She's not going to do it. But you never, never say never. <clears throat> Maybe if she had her a nice motorhome traveling in style like that crasher hey maybe one day folks you know you can't believe a damn thing I say I'll get a diesel truck and I can pull the crasher up and down mountains and hills like it's not even back there like I'm doing the, the little teardrop here but you're still not going to avoid having to put the slides out every time you want to sleep in it and you're not going to find at truck stops a very uh, good parking spot for that big old thing. I haven't seen any big RVs like that sleeping at these truck stops like I'm doing. In the car section, it's all like, you know, I, I think I'm the only RV really, uh, but it's it's vans, it's, it's guys with trailers, you know, construction stuff, uh, maybe a small camper, a Class C RV, you know, without towing anything. I've seen those, the small ones. But you're not seeing any big Class A's or uh, trucks pulling uh, like the Flagstaff. There's no room. There are maybe some of them, but I haven't found one yet. In fact, I've been to a couple already that are even smaller truck stops uh, that, that aren't as big as, as other ones. Even though the same name loves that Flying J back there was nice. I really liked it. We're in Arizona, everybody. 
We're in Arizona. What part of Arizona? Is this it? Houck? H-O-U-C-K? 348 miles to what's on the other side of Arizona? California. California. 350 miles to California. We can do it. We can do it. We can go to all the way to the Pacific. From the Atlantic to the Pacific. Boy, that Big Sur is a nice drive. I can drag this teardrop around <clears throat> those twisties like nothing. And uh, they got a little campground up there, a couple places. I could stay surreptitiously somewhere. Beautiful wine country you drive through. Uh, Napa and um, uh, Polos. Logos, what's it called? Polo. I used to buy the wine. It was wine. It was uh, bottled there. Uh, oh, I almost said it. Uh, it's Polos, Polo Alglas, something like that. And I probably wouldn't go to San Diego. I wouldn't go that far south. That's too uh, too much. But you go through Bakersfield and all that kind of stuff. It kind of reminds you of Texas because it's flat, very. Uh, West looking, deserty, very flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. How long has it been? Too long, right? Woo! What did that say? 41 minutes? We crushed it! 